dolls so before I get into this video obviously I wanted to let you guys know what I'm wearing what's on my face and all that stuff on my eyes is the dose of colors marvelous mauves palette my lips is the dose of colors liquid lipstick in the shade rosebud and my shirt is from yoins.com and my cardigan is this adorable lady in the tramp one that I actually found off of a seller on eBay so uh, yes it is Disney store official and I've been searching for this for forever and someone finally listed it in my size with that being said let's get on into this video now these videos have been going around for a little while now and they are basically just youtubers addressing assumptions that their fans followers etc have of them today I am going to address all of the assumptions that you guys have about me I'm not taking this as a hate video or or anything like that uh, this is all just assumptions that people have about me and I'm ready to set the record straight on them and let you guys know if they are true or not so I did one of those little poll things on my Instagram story as you can see right here what assumptions do you have about me and we're gonna get into this now one of the ones that I saw a lot there were like three or four that I saw a lot that I'm gonna address first and foremost the first one is that I am childish and I don't know how to act mature and I'm a child at heart and basically that I am just an immature being <laughs> And while this is true in some instances, this is completely false in other instances. For example, if a very serious matter comes up that involves like a life decision or family or health or finances or things like that and thinking about my future and all of that stuff, I do tend to have a more mature mindset. I tend to overthink things a lot <laughs> and that has to like play in with my anxiety and all that which I'll get to later probably but uh, yeah I, I there is a fine line like I am childish to a point like I love things that are targeted towards children such as My Little Pony, stuffed animals, uh, all kinds of things I love. Lisa Frank, Hello Kitty, My Little Pony, other Sanrio characters, uh, Aristocats, Disney. Yes, I love childish things. Even though I am 26 years old, I still love things like that because they make me happy. It's not that I'll sit, I'll literally sit there and play with my ponies and act out, oh hi, how are you today? Oh, I'm great, how are you? No, I, I collect these things. I just like to be surrounded by them because they make me smile and they're so bright and colorful. And when I see bright and colorful things, it automatically just like my heart glows. <laughs> and I think a lot of that had to do when I was growing up I was depressed quite a bit and so discovering all of, that I can like all of these things and basically not give a damn what anyone thinks uh, it's really opened a lot of doors for me mentally and emotionally and I really really love it so it's not necessarily that I'm childish or that I act immature all the time that is not the case at all whatsoever. You guys have watched my channel. If you've watched my videos where I sit down and talk about when my mom was going through her cancer battles and just other like personal family matters or even some of my Q&As, I've also done advice videos. I'm not, I'm not constantly 100% a five-year-old. Now that also leads me into a, another assumption a lot of people have about me is that I am involved in DDLG. No nada zip zilch zero that is not the case i have nothing against people who are of age and want to do that want to be involved with that that is their thing i personally just like to collect vintage and cutesy things and i'm not into that lifestyle per se now i do act different around my fiance i do tend to act a little bit more childish around him because hello your life is short as it is why make it shorter growing old is mandatory growing up is optional so yeah if i'm walking through walmart or target with my fiance and i want to grab a pillow and randomly hit it with it and act like an immature five-year-old i can and i will because life is too short to be 
your nose stuck up in the air and serious about everything 24 7. not all people are hyper and crazy and act childish all the time or even at all some people go through life just just completely serious fine laid back chill and that's their jam and that is completely okay that's just not necessarily who i am i have my times when i'm serious and i have my times when i'm a little immature and that's okay i'm not afraid to admit that and another one that i got a lot of questions about was living with my mom and moving out uh, a lot of people assume that I don't want to move out and a lot of people assume that I want to move out but I feel obligated to stay here because my mother is disabled and I do help take care of her and things so yeah it's kind of a little bit of both I don't necessarily want to move out because I'm basically the one helping take care of my mother <laughs> and if I were to move out right away it would kind of make me feel a little guilty I'm not gonna lie uh, but it's also another thing where my fiance respects that and he's not about to just like rip me away from my family <laughs> you know what I mean and uh, I know a lot of people have also commented things about him moving in with me and my mom uh, there's a reason that that has not happened yet that is a little bit personal so I'm not going to touch into it but yes there are reasons why that has not happened yet and um, I do. I do eventually want to get my own place with my fiance and I want us to, I want to move out and I want to have a place with him and everything. But everything has its time and no, I don't feel comfortable just leaving my mom right now because number one, I am not financially stable to do that yet, flat out, just being real. And number two, I'm here for her, you know, it's like she has me i have her alan has been crazy busy with work lately so it's been nice to have her and you know a lot of people say like oh well you can go visit her when you have your own place and things like that and yeah that's true i can uh i don't know it's just kind of like a personal thing and it will work itself out when it's meant to is how i feel but right now i'm not necessarily in a rush to move out but also it's not like i'm terrified of it or i'm super scared to go off on my own or anything like that it's just like the cards need to be right before I can make the next moves. Okay, and another one that I got constantly was, you are different in person than you are on your channel. This is true, but it's also false. Again, a lot of these have like different circumstances that make them true or false. And I am the same person in the fact of like, I always feel that I look the same in person that I do on my channel. So as far as looks go, I'm always dressed up in pastels unless I'm literally just lounging around at home. And if I'm doing that, I even got my little pastel sweatpants and just like random t-shirt or something. But I'm always in pastels. I don't wear black. Uh, that was another thing that people assumed about me was that I never wear colors other than pastels or pinks. Um, Pinks, obviously I wear different colors than pinks, but I don't typically wear dark colors just for the fact that I have a white cat. My mom and I have a white cat and she has long hair and she sheds like crazy. So if I were to wear black, it would be white in negative 2.5 seconds. <laughs> because of all of the hair that would attach itself to it. So that's half the reason that I don't wear black. The other half is it's just not my aesthetic. I don't, I don't find the color black being worn appealing per se. I do wear it sometimes. I have a few pieces in my wardrobe that are black or dark neutral colors, but I tend to gravitate more towards the pastels because again, it goes back to the bright colors and pastel colors and it just makes me happy whether I'm wearing it or looking at it or anything. I just love my pastels and colors. Come here. Come here. See, this is the culprit for the white fluffy hair. Hence why her name is Fluffy and why I cannot wear black. Cause you are very fluffy, Fluffy. Yeah. Yeah, you're very fluffy, Fluffy. Come here. What are you staring at? <laughs> she is zoning out. All right, bye. <laughs> I said bye. <laughs> like I said before, bouncing back to the, I'm sorry, this video is all over the place. Um, bouncing back to the one of I'm the same in person as I am in my videos or vice versa. Um, 
I am, but I'm not. I am do because of looks, and I feel like when I first meet someone in person now, I'm very, like bubbly and stuff like if one of my subscribers were to approach me and say hey I watch your videos I would be bubbly and excited to meet them but if it's a person that I've never met before I'm a little bit more timid and shy because if someone is a subscriber and they approach me I assume oh they've watched my videos they know about me I don't have to introduce myself they know who I am so it kind of breaks that ice Whereas if I meet a random stranger and they compliment my outfit or something like that, uh, then I have to like introduce myself and say, oh, I'm a YouTuber and I'm a little bit more timid and shy. I don't necessarily advertise my channel in person as much as I should. I carry a wallet full of my business cards with me and my mom constantly hands them out wherever we go. But I don't really advertise my channel. I, I like to get to know people first off by them not knowing about my channel because I feel like if they know about my channel and my personality on YouTube, they'll treat me differently. And I'm not saying that like my fans approaching me, fans, subscribers, dolls, whatever you wanna call them, um, you guys are awesome. But please don't hesitate to come up to me. I'm not saying that like, I don't wanna see you guys because I, I'm afraid you'll treat me different. No, it's not that way at all. It's just that I feel more timid and shy when I'm introduced to a group of people or in, if I'm in a group of people and meeting people for the first time. And this kind of leads me into another assumption is that people assumed that I was very popular in high school and that I was always a social butterfly. I was complete opposite. I had maybe one or two friends that would actually hang out with me and most of the time that was only during classes. So during lunchtime, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, I always sat in the hallway uh, by myself and no one would sit next to me, no one would talk to me, no one would approach me unless it was one of those people that kind of was an acquaintance. But I was really shy. I wouldn't talk to my teachers. I wouldn't rarely talk to the students other than people that I knew. And it, it was crazy. I have done a complete 180 since I graduated high school and I've made videos about this, but I'll go ahead and mention it again. Uh, it's because of YouTube. YouTube has really opened me up in ways that I never thought that I would be opening up, it's given me a lot more confidence. Yeah, I would barely ever eat lunch, and if I did, it was just in the hallway all by myself. I never ate lunch in the cafeteria. Oh my gosh, that was like the most anxiety-stricken thing ever for me in high school, was eating in front of tons of people. I couldn't do it. <laughs> and so I just bring like a little bag of just regular Cheerios, and I would just eat those during my lunch break, and I'd have my water bottle. And that was pretty much about it. I I ate, uh, sometimes I'll have like a little bag of chips or something, but I, it was always something I brought from home. I would never bring like a full sandwich or anything from home and eat it. In high school, I also never used my locker. I went four years having the exact same locker without even touching it once. All I did was locate where it was at and then I just ignored it from then on out. I carried all of my books in my bag. It was, it was crazy. My back got some major workouts, but I was always just too nervous. I always went directly from one class to the next. I didn't stop at a locker. I just was too worried about being tardy or late or anything. So I would just immediately go, go, go. Also, I never went to the bathroom at school because I was again worried that I'd be late or tardy. And so if I ever did have to go to the bathroom, I would go to the bathroom that was the least used uh, in the hallway where I used to sit at lunchtime. And I would go during lunchtime and I would make sure that like everyone was out of the bathroom before I went in. <laughs> And it was crazy. I was complete opposite that I am today. And I'm so thankful for basically you guys and my channel because of it. So yes, I am still shy in certain situations and that's okay. I'm, I'm growing. I'm still continuing to grow and it's it's awesome. I am so happy that I've grown this far and I could do a whole video. I think I did do a whole video about overcoming social anxiety. So I think it's pretty old though, but if you type in Manna through 1409 social anxiety or something like that on YouTube, I'm sure it'll pop up and you can watch it. Um, I don't even remember what I said in that video, but I think I did talk about like going to the cashiers at stores and having to give my money to someone else to pay for me because I was too scared to talk to the cashier, things like that. 
Anyway, moving on. Uh, this one, your mom still does your laundry. This is actually true. And the only reason that this is true is because my mom is very, very picky about her things. She doesn't want anybody touching her stove, her washer and dryer, her kitchen utensils. She doesn't want anybody messing with those. So she has been a little, eh, get away, get away from my stuff with me <laughs> ever since I was little all the way up till now. I do know how to do laundry. I do know how to cook and things like that. Obviously I know how to bake because I work at a bakery, but yeah, this is true because she won't allow me to do my own laundry because she doesn't want me to mess anything up. If you expect your kids to survive in the wild when they grow up, you need to let them practice when they are at home so they know when they grow up. And you know what? If they fail and they break something, then hey, that's on them and they learned. You know, they learned from their mistake and they can correct themselves for the future. If I break it, I'll buy you a new one. If I break it, I'll pay to fix it. Like, I don't care, just let me do so. She just, she won't let me. I, like I said, I do know how, it's just, I ain't allowed to. <laughs> okay, I saw this one a few times too, and it was that I'm a very laid back person and I do not get mad easily. <laughs> Oh, this one's a little false. <laughs> I am definitely not a laid back person. I feel like I have to plan everything and I'm always worrying. Like again, this is back at my anxiety. We're doing full circle here. I worry about everything. I'm constantly thinking about stuff that hasn't happened yet and it just, it's insane. It is so stressful and draining and sometimes it gets the better of me and I get angry about the littlest tiniest of things and bless my fiance's soul <laughs> he is so sweet and so good like I will be freaking out stressing out like crazy like if I have a trip coming up or back in school when I had a test that I had to study for and it was just nerve-wracking or a presentation or just nowadays like if I have a meetup or something I'm stressing out the night before like I am up all night all wee hours of the night just stressing stressing my mind is going 10,000 miles an hour thinking about all the things that could go right all the things that could go wrong what I can do to make things right if they do go wrong basically making solutions in my head to issues that haven't even occurred yet and it's exhausting <laughs> and like I said bless my fiance's soul because he is one of the only people other than my mother that can sit down look me in the face and just calm me down instantly and just like make me you know come back to earth for a little bit <laughs> and he's he's just he's put up with my little anger spouts once in a while. I'm not to the point where I get physical when I get angry. I raise my voice a little bit, but I don't like scream bloody murder and want to kill anybody. It's just, I get a little peeved and that's, that's normal. I have my off days. I have days where I'm crying, bawling my eyes out. I have days where I'm angry and yelling and PMS and all that stuff. So I'm only human. And the reason that you guys don't see me like that a lot is because I only film when I'm in a mood like this. I don't want to film when I'm in any other mood other than maybe it's like an emotional mood and I want to like do like a video diary type thing and just kind of like share my experiences and thoughts with you guys or give advice and things like that. But for the most part, I only film when I am happy and this is how you guys usually only always see me. I'm a normal human being. I have days where I just, I want to rip someone's face off. <laughs> we all do, right? But um, you guys only really see me like this because that's the only time I allow myself to film because any other way, it just is mentally exhausting for me and it's not worth it. I want to be here and have a happy, healthy channel and in order to do that, I got only film when I'm happy and healthy. Yeah, sure, that's not the reality of things. I'm not always like this, but... Another reason I am like this when I film is because filming and you guys and my channel makes me this way. Because it's kind of like my escape. YouTube has always kind of been my escape from crazy, hectic things going on in my personal life. And it's just kind of a way to get away and breathe a little bit, like reading a book or something. So anyway, yes, there's that one.
Ooh, 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 here's one. That your pink hair is a wig and not your real hair. I did a full video about this, actually. Um, well, not like a full video, but I did a video all about how to make a wig look like your real hair, and this is my wig right now. But um, my hair is actually the same shade of pink underneath of here. Uh, my roots are just real bad. Uh, as you can see, my roots are real bad. But yes, my real hair is 100%, well, like... 90% pink because my roots aren't um, <laughs> But my real hair is the same shade I've done videos about dyeing my hair pink and how I maintain my pink hair and coloring my roots touching them up So yes, my hair on my head is actually pink But the reason I got the wig is so that I wouldn't have to style my hair every single time I wanted to film a video, but when I am doing sponsorships for brands that are uh, like uh, hair vitamins or maybe even hot tools I use my real hair and maybe extensions if I'm doing like a hot tools review But if it is like a promo for like sugar bear hair or something, it's always 100% my real hair I don't wear extensions. I don't wear a wig because hello That's just like a slap in the face and false advertisement that just disgusts me when people are like, oh my gosh I love this nail growth vitamin and like they're wearing acrylics. It's like what? It's 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 also like when people are advertising like teeth whitening thing. They're advertising a teeth whitening kit and they're smiling like this. Like no. Like if you're going to do your job and you're going to get paid for promoting a product, at least do it right. You, you know, like it's so dumb to me. And I guess we'll end on this one. It is that you and your fiance have been together a long time. Yes, if you guys did not know, 31409 stands for the date that my fiance and I originally started dating. So yes, this year, 2019, full circle, it will have been 10 years on March 14th since he asked me out and since we've been together. Like, I just wish anyone and everyone to be able to experience love and a relationship like we have shared. Now, don't get me wrong, our relationship has not, not at all, been cupcakes and rainbows all the time. We have gone through a lot together. There was one point where I almost had to move away. I'm not going to get into it, but uh, it was a rocky road, and I, I, hmm. We, we were this close to breaking up only for the fact that I was going to be moving away and we both agreed that we couldn't do a long distance relationship like that. And it was really hard <laughs> to like go through that hurdle or jump over that hurdle. And then of course we've had like family health scares and things like that. I wish anyone and everyone to be able to experience um, the love and dedication that we've had in our relationship. Um, and again, maybe it's not someone that is, you know, your true love and you want to marry them necessarily. Maybe it's just a best friend. Maybe it's just a family member. Uh, I just want you to be able to experience being with someone who is literally there for you through thick and thin, sickness and health, till death do us part. Again, it doesn't even have to be someone that you're in love with, but that you have that relationship with. But yeah, with that being said, I am going to go ahead and let you guys go. I hope you liked this video and it kind of cleared the air and informed you of some facts and not so facts <laughs> about me. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any other assumptions about me down below and maybe I'll reply to some of your comments there. Um, but yes, with that being said, I will talk to you all in my next video. So until then, so long, stay strong, stay true, and be you.